Well, aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to Hibachi Talk. Gordo the Tech Star here. I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hello, everybody. This is awesome. we good got a here, really man. great show today. We're yeah. about talking about my favorite subject, Bitcoin. 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 Crypto Bitcoin. Crypto we have crypto. Russell Castagnaro here. Hello. Russell, Russell is an uh, um, expert in this, in this industry and has his own company doing some pretty cool and interesting things. So we're going we're gonna to talk about how to make Bitcoin transactions made easy. Okay. It's not that complicated. Because everybody's right. scared. Everybody's now. making it complicated. So gra grab a chair, have a libation, and sit down and join us for another you know, thrilling, exciting episode yes. of Mubachi Talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about Wampum LLC. We're going right. to get into that. But um, um, e commerce for everybody. Um, but first of all, I'd like to get a little bit of background on our guests. You know, so a little, so, little, get, tell us about yourself, a little where me. you're from, who you are, what you do. So um, let's see, I moved here in 97 uh, from Silicon Valley after doing a bunch of stuff in the e-commerce world. Uh, one of the first, um, one of the first credit card websites for AT&T and Universal Card Services, um, my team implemented. It was pretty exciting. And then, um, you know, I moved on and got frustrated with the, the mainland world and moved to Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, started working for Data House, local consulting company. Oh, and yeah. Yep. Uh, started their Java practice and got into e-commerce with them. Uh, and then a few years later, I started my own thing, um, where I was working mainly around the Pacific Rim for e-commerce implementations on some sort of higher-end uh, platforms. Uh, and then I got into e-government uh, after doing some startups and other things. With, so I ran the uh, Hawaii Information Consortium, right. which was which is the state's uh, main contractor for government services. So, so if there's something you could do with the state, um, and it's easy to use and awesome, we did it. And if yeah. it wasn't, then we probably didn't. Um, <laughs> that was so, the other so guy. So are you, in, are you, I love this loaded question, are you involved in the new tax system? I No, the, the, <laughs> HRC was not involved in the new tax system. <laughs> Ours was free and they paid for the, you know, several million dollars. So you can be the judge yourself. Yeah, I know, I just think that loaded, I love that one. Oh yeah, no, that, no thank you. <laughs> So let's jump right into it because you know I, you're not gonna believe this. I, before I came on the show, I got a call from a broker wanting to know about how he can invest in Bitcoin from a one broker. of his clients. A broker, a stock he broker. He doesn't know how to invest. Well, and in Bitcoin, <laughs> in Bitcoin. So we're gonna talk about how Bitcoin, how easy it is to make a Bitcoin. So how do I get a Bitcoin? I mean, the, the, how do I get? Sure. How, how do you get so, a Bitcoin? So getting a Bitcoin, there, there's three main ways. Okay. Uh, the first way is the easiest, and that is you can get it from a person. So somebody you know, you can come right. to me or to right. you. Um, and you can buy Bitcoin from one of us. Um, and there are websites that let you go to other people who are interested in selling their Bitcoins, like localbitcoins.com. Mm -hmm. um, and they, let, they list lots of people who are selling. Right. All over the world. All over the world. And yeah, this is a Finland-based company, if I recall. That's correct. That's correct. And they even have like a little ATM software and stuff that people can use themselves. Uh, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, another is uh, Bitcoin ATMs. So a Bitcoin ATM works with, uh, with your wallet, and you basically put in some money or a credit card, um, prove you are who you are, and normally you include like a phone number or something like that, and then it will send you Bitcoin. Uh, the first two are really good. Um, Bitcoin ATM, it, it seems kind of nice, but normally the, the exchange rate's a little higher. Right. Now, what about a Bitcoin broker? Because there's a brick Bitcoin exchange, and we'll use one, right. of, one that we used to use. That we got, I'm going to slam somebody. Uh, oh, coin, no. the, I, coin, you know, we use Coinbase, Coinbase right? Coinbase, right. So I used Coinbase for the longest period of time. Right. Um, you used it for the longest period of time. Sure. So that's another way, but it's a little bit more complicated. Well, yeah, so using an exchange, uh, especially a US-based exchange, is, is how most people, if you're going to do a whole live transact, if you want to buy, if you want to invest, you're going to go through one of them. Right. And that way you can use your credit card, use your um, bank, you need to do um, a bank deposit, uh, and it's normally l the lowest cost way to go. The lowest cost, because you, you've got the exchange. Now, we right. used to use we Coinbase. Used to use Coinbase. So how come we can't use Coinbase now? So, so <laughs> Uh, another He's loaded, so, to the another right. loaded let me uh, let me prepare myself. Okay. Uh, so, so um, what Coinbase did is Coinbase was one of the uh, more aggressive uh, exchanges, and they went on a 50-state strategy or 49 states because there's 49 states that have money transmitter laws, and uh, they wanted to get basically uh, approval from each of the state um, regulators, which here is the is Department of, fin of uh, Financial Institutions, mm -hmm. um, part of DCCA. Right. And so they submitted a letter to say, hey, we'd like you know, to get your feelings on whether or not we can, we can run. And the, um, the commissioner sent them a reply letter, which they put all over. You can see it up on Medium, yeah. uh, which basically said, well, the only way it's okay is if you have a dollar backing every dollar in Bitcoin or other oh, for the state of Hawaii. that you a, have for any of your customers in the state of Hawaii. Which oh, is wow. a multi-billion dollar with a B. Yeah, right. 
So, uh, so they weren't happy. Yeah, no kidding. I think that's, that, that's I think, the safest way to put it. They weren't happy with that. Um, and, uh, and so I think what they did is they withdrew. I think it's a lot like what Uber did in some of the cities, right. Uber and Yelp, yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, that, that they, they went out until the environment was um, conducive to them working. So, so that, you know, they, they came out and they're hoping, I think, things come down from the federal level. And maybe there's some consensus from, um, from, the, um, from her peers in, the, um, in other states mm -hmm. about how to really regulate this. Because it's all over the map. You've got Vermont. You've got um, Arizona, you've got um, Nevada, uh, Florida, who basically say, oh, yeah, Bitcoin's exempted from any of our regulations. Right. And then you've got New York and Hawaii, and they are so they have the other side. New York heavily regulates them. Um, Hawaii also heavily regulates. So, so it'll come up somewhere. It'll come up somewhere. You know, and, and when the feds come in, they'll, they'll probably bring some guidance, too. It's so just the, really new. The, what, what was the DCCA's thinking behind trying to anchor real money well, they think they're, they're, well, that's that thought, call it, this paternalistic kind of thing. Like, they know better on what you and I should be doing with our money. Well, I mean, their job, is, their job is to take care, you know, is to make sure that people are protected. And they're, they're always going to err to trying to protect people from, from, um, from themselves. scams. And, and, from, and from themselves, <laughs> yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm not happy about the decision. No. But, um, but you really, I mean, who's, she wasn't going to win any awards for, for saying go for it. You no, know, not at nothing all. Nothing but... but she, you know, there's not really a winning solution here until other states really chime in. But the key is, though, and okay. this is we go back to is the fact that I can, I can send you a Bitcoin. And we're gonna, in a little bit, we're going to do a demo. I can right. send you a Bitcoin. You can send me a Bitcoin right now and without even having DCCA That's right. or um, Coinbase or anybody involved. I can That's do right. that today. That's so, right. Um, and there's no, essentially, there's no dollar limit, per se, That's correct. on how much I can send doing this. So you, you sit and you go like, well, they just don't understand. And I, what I did is, because I, I like to use the exchanges, I moved mine to Great Britain, mm -hmm. where the exchange was okay. So the World Wide Web and gives me all those opportunities. So it's just right. like, drive, well, it's just so we can do it. So, so, but here's one, is like right now Bitcoin is trading, and Bitcoin is one of many cryptocurrencies. So right. let me say that again, because there's, there's um, my favorite, well, I'm not going to say my favorite, but you know, there's other, other ones out there. There's Litecoin, there's Ethereum, sure. Ripple. You go down the list, there's a many of cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, right. market cap, Right today yeah. is number one at trading at about twenty two hundred bucks right, right. Uh, per Bitcoin. I saw it go almost to three thousand, and saw it go to eighteen hundred last weekend. Week. Yeah, I know. How was that for the fate of heart? Yeah, <laughs> it just it's, it's like scary. a roller coaster ride. So, which begs the question: How do their values get set? How do well, we know what that? How, yeah. What's your what's your perception on how that does? Well, what, what's really interesting, like when you look at Bitcoin, you look at Ethereum. What's really really cool is because there's no institution driving. There's not like a New York Stock Exchange. There's not um, there's not even a bank that's in charge. It's really the true market. And there's no market maker. Now, what a market maker is, is like, a, like somebody who will, guarantee, who will buy or sell whatever you want them to buy or sell at some price. Like a bookie, you right. know, yeah. and, and, you know um, right? So, oh, you want to bet on, on UH? Okay, these are the odds. Oh, you want to bid against UH? Okay, here are the odds. They'll take either bet, right? right? And so they make the market. Um, and the idea is when you have a big enough circulation and enough people interested in something, a market can be self-regulating. In reality, you look at the New York Stock Exchange, they have limits. So if, mm -hmm. more, if there's a certain percentage, if, that, if your market goes up or down, more than that percentage in a certain period of time, they stop trading. Yeah, they freeze, they freeze they it. They freeze it, yep. So, um, so what happened, very interesting, like three or four weeks ago with Ethereum, uh, which has less, you know, less circulation, right. less users, less, um, less buyers, there was a period when it, went, it was up over 300 yep. and it went down to 11 cents yep. and then it went back up in the space of 45 seconds. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. And that's because there was no one taken, there, there was somebody said sell, right? This is all software driven. Right. Right? Somebody, someone said sell and there was no one to take the sell until 11 cents. And then everyone's trigger, all their software that's in their, in their yeah. software said, oh my God, there was a buy at 11, buy, 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 buy. And it went all the way back up super fast. You know, um, and that's what you have when you have an unregulated market. Like, it's fascinating. I think, I think the economists are watching this just right. salivating. And, 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 and we need to mention, too, you can use cryptocurrencies to purchase things. So that's the oh, yeah, thing. that's like, what we do. I mean, that's, that's what our, do. our whole business it's, it's is all your about. Your whole business is all yeah. about. We're going to get into that. So, so the next thing is, so my friends, and you've heard it too, 
and you talk about are saying, oh, this whole Bitcoin cryptocurrency thing is a Ponzi scheme. Right. You know, so, you know, and so how do you respond to that? I mean, I respond to it all the time, but right. what's, what's, the, what's the approach you take? So, so a Ponzi scheme, how I know this isn't the next Madoff thing, right? Yeah, right? Well, the big thing about a Ponzi scheme is you're taking new money right. and giving that new money to existing investors um, as returns on in their investments. Right. right. A pyramid scheme or a Ponzi. That's all. It's clearly not the case. So Bitcoin and all, almost all the cryptocurrencies, one of the most important parts of them is having a public blockchain right. or a public ledger. And that means anyone can look at any transaction, see where it came from, see where it went. And um, that means that there's no one taking new money that comes in and giving it to someone else. Because I can go look Ponzi. at that blockchain. You can go look at it. And like, see it. Like that, right now, right, right here, now. Like that 50 cent transaction that we did earlier, yeah. that, you know, that, that's not going to someone else right. who is buying a new Bitcoin. Right? All the Bitcoin that you can buy has already been made. There's right. nothing new that's being made. Right. There's no new stock being issued. There's no controlling party. It's all the system. And so, um, so the value that's in, that's, that's, that people give to Bitcoin is because they see that value there. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's a, it is truly a currency, and it's not even a commodity, right? Because you can't, uh, I'm not going to go and build my house out of Bitcoins, right? I have to go buy things with them. So, right. so it is truly a currency. Right, it truly is a currency, and takes you there. So, so we've covered this. We get, now we're going to talk about the, a cryptocurrency wallet. Okay, what, what is a cryptocurrency wallet? So, so yeah. So help, this is, help, this the, is, help the viewers understand this piece of it. I, I, I love it. So wallet is really a useful, you know, it, it's useful to bring out that imagery of a wallet. You right. know, I have my wallet. I have my credit cards in it, which are another thing, or my cash, right? right. And it holds my cash. Now, right. a wallet, in, in, in this respect, is normally software, but it could be paper, it could be hardware. That's a great picture. Yeah, so of, here's a picture of, your, of a, here's an electronic wallet. That's right. right. So that's your, your copay wallet, right, right. there. That's Texar's wallet, by the way. Yes, Texar's right. wallet, right? No, that's not. I didn't show them mine. But that's, that's a copy of one. <laughs> right. And so, so what this wallet does is um, on the, the Bitcoin, there's the Bitcoin network. Right. And the Bitcoin network is made up, I like to think of it as, if you ever walk into a, an old business that has like little cubby holes for everyone, little mail slots. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's got their name on the mail slot. Anyone can put a mail, mail in, but the only person who's supposed to pull stuff out is, is that person. Right. So think of the Bitcoin network as this wall of infinite cubby holes. And instead of names, there's an address that's a really long string long that you can't key, read. Key. And that, that, so everyone can see whatever's in there, what's been in there, where it's gone, where it's come from. All the history is all in the blockchain. Right. Um, and there's a secret key associated with that. And only the people or the person or the computer that has, has that information, that secret key, can unlock the money that's inside and the data also that's inside that location. So all the wallet does is it keeps track of your public location, your address, mm -hmm. and your secret key. And then whenever you open it up, it tells you how much money you have by going to the by going to the blockchain and like, saying how much is in here? Okay, pulling it back. And so it's look, so all the time when I'm looking at my wallet because the, this is going up and down all the time. Right. And looking at it, it says okay, you have this much in your wallet. Right. And then if you have a cool wallet, it's going to go ahead and in real time convert that to whatever your favorite to, currency is, is, so you know how you're tracking. What's your Bitcoin worth? What, what, right. You know, what, what is all worth at this point? I mean, so and and what's well, I, I think made money on the fifty cents you oh, gave yeah, me. Oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're rocking. There's people. I, I gave about twenty, about uh, about fifty different people fifty cents over the last week. Yeah. I was up in Portland at the World Domination Summit. They're all, they're all sitting pretty. They're all, they've all got like 80, 60, 80, 80, 75 cents. So I'm, I'm doing a presentation. That's, that's like 50% gain, man. <laughs> Amazing. I'm doing a presentation to a, 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 a woman's association uh, in August, and my plan is to, get as many of them that want to, will download a uh, copay wallet and set it up while I'm doing my presentation. Oh, that's and great. then I'll send them all like 10 cents in Bitcoin. Nice. And they'll all sit there and say they already have it. That's, that's, it's, the way. that's the way to do it. That's it's the just way to, do to it. get people Share to the understand. Wealth. Share the wealth. Right. <laughs> but unless it's 10 cents, he gave me 50. That's right. <laughs> no skimping. This no skimping. Nice. Man, he's he's, he's here. Yeah, yeah, he's right. So anyway, okay, we're going to come up on it. We're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about wampum, okay, e-commerce, and how we're seeing this next thing. But it's been kind of cool. We've gone from the ground. we got the wallet. Now yeah. we're going to go into uh, some exciting stuff that you're doing. And Angus has a question for you. So he wants oh, to talk sure. to you. Oh, sure. Right. Let's get Angus So We'll get Angus. So... Sorry, we've been talking so much, Drew, and we haven't I'm given listening. you a chance. I'm that's learning. Right, that's all right. You're learning. My stock's going up. <laughs> His stock is going up. I'll send you some Bitcoin. Anyway, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in about a minute.
watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Freedom, is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possible. Hey everybody, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii and our cryptocurrency episode of Hibachi Talk. I think even Angus is getting in on cryptocurrency. Angus, what do you got for us, buddy? How you doing there, dude? It's really great. Good, man. Russell, Good to see you, great brother. to see you there, lad. Great to meet you. Oh, it was awesome all these years. You know, <laughs> you know, I keep all my money really close to my heart. So I think mean, what I do is I keep my money in this. You showed the electronic wallet earlier, right? Right. So I have this thing called a keep key. Yeah, you because know, you know, I like to hold on to my currency. For sure. So you know, keep so, key. So the keep key is a kind of physical <laughs> wallet you can get, you can download your key. Get the one you talked about on your That's wallet. Right. But are there any other, other kinds? Because can I keep my wallet somewhere else? Oh, for what else sure. is there? That, that is such a great question. I'm so glad you asked it. Oh, um, the, the the key is that you've got lots of different wallets. Let me show the software wallet. You can also have a paper wallet. So a paper wallet, like I said, just has has this uh, you know your your public address which you share, and your private address which you do not share. Okay. That's, your, that's your that's your that's your secret key. That one, right? Huh? So that's the one that you would hide, and this is the one that you would have people send you money to. You could go take this, uh, have people sending you money, have money going there, and you put it in a safe. Ah, right, fine. Uh, there's also this this is kind of a fun little thing. Uh, they've got these wallets, so you can actually preload money on one of these and so you can go someplace and say oh you want some bitcoin you can i can put it on here they can of course look at the address see how much I money scan is it in with it. My, i scan it with my, my so computer. here we can put this in your pocket oh, there. Right. how much is in there uh nothing yet ah. uh, but i figured you can use your hardware wallet ah because you've got hardware wallets as well and so hardware wallets work a lot like a paper wallet except you can store more than one address um they can actually they, they are based on um they're based on hierarchical um hierarchical wallets and um, they are, um, they're really the only safe way to store if you have a significant amount of money. Uh, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to store a whole lot of money in, let's say, a Bitcoin exchange. Aye. Right? Because they, they own your key. Right. And if they get hacked, guess where your money went? They're gone. You'll know where it went, but you won't be able to get it. Uh, right. that's, why I keep it, it back. that's why I keep it in my key and in that's my right. wallet and in my kilt. That that's way no one right. can get it. So you get your hardware key, you put it in your kilt. No one's looking there. Oh, uh, yeah, no great. One's See, <laughs> awesome. What a great, great. Thank you very much. Anyway, I gotta head on out. Let Gordon come back. But thank you, Russell. It was awesome. Uh, it was great to meet and you. Send me fifty cents too, yeah. Okay. All I'll, right. I'll, I've got. I'll, I'll upset that address. I'll okay. Hello, it, lad. <laughs> All right. And like I say at the end of every segment, let your wing game be where you be. Save your Bitcoin. Hello. Ha. We gotta remind Angus not to go swimming <laughs> with his paper Bitcoin wallet either. You know how he spends all that time on the beach. All right, guys, that was some good advice. Yeah, that was some good advice. Be so careful if you cool. start sending Angus money, by the way. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. He might like it. You never know what he'll do with it. Oh, he'll definitely like He's it. He's so tight, he squeaks, though. <laughs> anyway, so we've got some, I think we've gone through some great stages here. We've talked it up. Until, let's talk about Wampum, Wampum LLC sure. and e-commerce and how Bitcoin is going to play and, and how you're playing, uh, sure. how you're getting into this, or you've been in, into this aspect of the business. Sure. What's happening there? So, so, you know, with Bitcoin, the, the primary thing that we want to do is bring e-commerce e technology to everyone. Right. And right now, if you uh, don't have a bank, or if you are, um, or for some reason you are like maybe not following the federal law guidelines for some reason or another, like if you're in, uh, if you're in some states selling sex toys, 
Okay. Um, or if you that's are, what Angus does with that's, his that's, that's, that's where we were going with it. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, or if you are selling legal marijuana. Yeah, the marijuana industry. Right. 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 Um, you cannot. You know, you can't get a bank account. In the event that you could get a state bank account, you'll get no, no acquiring bank, no uh, credit card merchant bank will right. work with you. So. You know, basically, it's out of access. You, you don't have access right. to e-commerce tools, so you're doing things with bags of cash, right? Which is crazy. This is dangerous. what the marijuana um, industry dangerous. is doing. Yeah, yeah. It's very dangerous. As uh, one example. Yes. Uh, so there's, there's, you know, all over. You go in Colorado. They have armed guards, you know, in trucks going around everywhere doing drops left and right all the time. That's just the way that they do things right. now. And it's, in my mind, it's crazy. I mean, we we process two billion dollars of payments for the for the state when I was at HIC. Can you imagine if they had to take all that in in cash? It would, it would, they wouldn't be able to do it. Right. Yeah, it's, it, it's totally not it. scalable. Crazy, yeah. There's, you know, industries that need this technology, and you know, states, uh, countries like Japan, South Korea, Singapore, they've already said, you know, we're on the boat. Right. But um, because these folks can't get banking, we wanted to make a tool that we, they would just have software. We wouldn't actually touch their money. Right. But they could use the software to allow their, their, um, their stores to accept cryptocurrency. At the storefront, like uh, like over here at um, at uh, local Joe. So like a point of sale. Like at a point of sale. Okay. Um, or online. So if they're selling something online, they can also take it and it shows a QR code. They get right. scanned, and the, you know there's an automatic notification process because of the blockchain. So, but I had, does awesome. that mean I have a different point of sale system, or I can use uh, is it an iPad or um, so? Right. How so does so, that work? so there there are, you know it'd be silly for us to try and compete with all the point of sales exactly. in the world. There's a lot of really sophisticated it's ones. Like having two phones in your desk. Right. You know you have Shopkeep for some, for small businesses, and you've got these other really really sophisticated ones for restaurants and. There's no way we wanted to compete in that. Really, all we want to do is help companies use our software to accept currency for themselves. Okay. So we write plugins for existing point of sale systems. Okay. So the existing point of sale system, I will come up, come up with my wallet. I'll scan it in. Oh, by That's the right. way, I haven't done the transaction. You'll pay from your. But I'll Bitcoin scan it wallet. in and pay from my Bitcoin wallet exactly. right then and there. And then, how does it, how does the not the consumer, but how does the uh, the uh, proprietor get their cash? So the proprietor would then, um, what we would do is, there, you know, there are a number of transactions that come in during the day. Right. And, and similar to like when they, uh, when they batch their transactions for credit cards or something like that, there's a similar activity they do, and they send it to whatever target location they want. It could be like account you know, uphold, okay. uh, where it automatically gets converted to whatever currency they want. They could store it in, um, they could store it in Bitcoin natively, mm -hmm. or they could have it go to their hardware wallet. Like yeah. Angus's. Yeah, you know? they can actually transfer it to a bank. And they, they could, well, if they converted it over, they could transfer yeah, it to a bank. Yeah, once it becomes once an, you, another, you, a non-cryptocurrency. So, and you mentioned Uphold as one of those right. examples, because there's an example, and correct me if I get it wrong, is that I could go to the store, if I have an Uphold account, which is not that difficult to create, I could then from my store send it to my Uphold account, and if I want to from that point in time, I can move it to actually a... A, like a debit card. That's right. Yeah. A so I've got debit card. I've got a I've got a debit card that I have a, a Bitcoin location that I can just send my Bitcoin to. So there you go. And I can send it. This is a Visa debit. It's a Visa. So it's BitPay Visa debit card awesome. that you can move Bitcoins to co convert it to cash. Exactly. And so, and what about the transaction fees? Let's talk about that. But some of the value sure. of Bitcoin here. We didn't touch on that yet. So so um so Bitcoin transactions aren't free. Yeah. Right. There is the underlying system. There's like 10,000 nodes running. They're all running the software that makes Bitcoin possible. Right. And uh, they are given a reward when then when your transaction goes through. And that reward totally depends on not the amount but the size. So, for instance, um, when uh, when Senator Espero, when we, we we talked to him earlier, we sent him. I sent him 50 cents. Right. right? And the charge for sending that 50 cents was 26 cents. Yeah. And that was because... Was it 26 or 2.6 cents? It was 26 cents. Was 26? That was 26 cents. Okay. So, and which is about as low as it can get yeah. when you're talking about Bitcoin at a price of okay. $2,300. Right. right. So, um, but if I had sent him $500, which would have had, been, had to be reported, of course, because that would have been a donation. But, uh, yeah, um, to the center. Yes, to the center. <laughs> to the center. But, uh, but if, I, if, I had sent, you know, if I had sent him $500, right. that would have been 26 cents. Right. So right? Because it's, it's the size of the transaction which is determined from a number of different things, mm -hmm. but not the amount. But so, and by size of the transaction, you mean the... But so what happens is, you know, you've got your address right. that you're sending to. You've got right. an address where your money's coming from. So what you do is every time a transaction happens, you take everything that's in a certain address, right. you send it in the transaction, and part of it goes to the target you're going to. The rest of it goes to a new address right. that now your wallet has. Right. 
So that's your change. That's the change. So it automatically yeah, makes a change. Auto, uh, automatically. So there's all, there, the minimum is three transactions, unless you just have a, have a you know, you have one Bitcoin, you're sending one Bitcoin, boom. Right, that would be the difference. That's there. the difference. So, and so the, the kind of the cool thing is, so you can, st you can, you can, you can load up your wallet from friends or from friends or ATMs or, or exchanges. ATMs or exchanges. Once I've got my lo my wallet loaded up, I can continue to pass those cryptocurrencies onto anyone anyone that wants to download a particular wallet to their um, device, and then they have it. That's right. Now, what if I lose this device? So if you lose that device, so so because you have all the information on the device, um, you could lose it, just like if you lost your wallet, exactly. you lose your cash. Luckily, you can also make a backup. A paper copy. Um, you can make you can have a paper copy, or you can use what's called a, a mnemonic. So when you set up your wallet, mm -hmm. you can use a mnemonic, which is a series of I think um, thirteen words or twenty six words. It's like yoga. I yeah. can't. It's right. some, um, yeah, it's but it's, all the names. It's, a, it's a it's a number of words that you would then write down. It's made easier to remember. You write down, store it someplace safe, and then you could reconstitute your wallet somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're running up on just a couple of minutes. So before we hit that, so let's talk about Wampum again okay. briefly. Again, Wampum provides the ability to do to to accept cryptocurrency payments um, in in real time and allows you to get that money. Almost immediately. Almost immediately, without having to have a bank intermediary, right? Without or a two and a half percent charge, charge or more if it's American That's right. Express. So where can where can people find? So out if about you Wampum? go to uh, cryptowampum.com, uh, that is the best place to find out information. Uh, on our Twitter is uh, at wampum. At wampum, also. and wampum is an Indian word that means well, actually crypto wampum. Yeah, uh, it means money. <laughs> money, yeah, right? It means money with a little extra spirituality. Uh, on and, and, and nice. So I mean, this is big. So again, this is the, and I've been saying this for a while. I'm not giving you investment advice. I'm just telling you that this is the next new wave. This is the equivalent of the World Wide Web when it got started. As far as I'm yes. concerned. Uh, people better be paying attention to it. Um, and, your, and, your, and your wallet is your browser. And your wallet is in your the browser. New world, in the new world of money, your wallet well, is, is your browser. Your browser. And, yeah. so, and we're, some of us are doing it. I mean, you've got mileage. That's a form of cryptocurrency, no matter what right. way you look at it. Anyway, no guest goes unrewarded. You get the Yay! autograph solo cup, number 127 in the series. Excellent. So um, you could probably get, oh, I don't know, a millionth of a Bitcoin for this time. <laughs> Let us know if you do. I will, like, at least 40 Satoshis. Yeah, there you uh, go. You know. Satoshi Nakamura. Excellent. Yeah. And if you don't know who that is, then you better go do some homework. That's right. Anyway, thanks again for uh, joining us here in Hibachi Talk. Thanks for the team in the back that help makes it, helps make this work all the time. Thank you, Russell. Thank you. Wampum, go check Thanks. it out. I yes. promise you, you're going to really like what you see. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you, you doing? doing?